Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Muscle Building Mastery Podcast. My name's Andy Clements and I'm really excited to have you here for this episode in which we're going to talk a little bit about post-workout nutrition. So um, in the last episode, we talked about should you take a pre-workout and in this episode, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the period following your workout. What should you do? Um, should you nail a shake straight away? Should you start loading up on carbs? What should you do? So. I'm going to give you a little bit of information that I hope you find really, really useful because I found it really, really useful. And the reason I, found out, like, how I found out about this information is um, years ago when I first started my first ever uh, training program. The uh, it was awesome. I gave me some really good information, but it also gave me some questionable stuff, right? And um, but I just lapped it all up because I didn't know anything, right? So I just lapped it all up. So what what it used to tell me to do is it used to say. Um, uh, uh, there's this thing called an anabolic window, right? So these call it the anabolic window, right? And if you didn't get your um, post-workout protein shake in this anabolic window, then you would like lose all your gains and you would die, right? <laughs> Maybe I'm exaggerating, but the, basically they were saying like, um, this is like the optimal time to get your protein intake in because your body's dying for food and all this stuff and you've depleted all your energy and all that kind of stuff. So I was like, oh my God, like I bought into it 100%. I was like, right, I need to um, smash my protein shake in, in this um, anabolic window. I need to get um, I, uh, as much food in as possible. So what I used to do is um, I used to nail, I used to take my protein with me to the gym and um, as soon as I was walking out the gym, I'd like nail, I'd knock back my protein as fast as I could, like like mix it really, really quickly and knock it back as fast as I could to maximize on this anabolic window. And then I'd drive, like speed home as fast as I could from the gym, like do a half hour journey in like 15, 10, 15 minutes. And um, I'd ram down my meal, I'd have my meal already prepared in the fridge, I'd whack it in the microwave and I'd, ram it down as fast as I could, like barely even chewing it, just like get it in, I want to take fudge into the anabolic window. Um, and I, th I thought I was doing the right thing. I thought well, by, like, by doing this, I'm going to grow really fast because I, I'm making, I'm taking advantage of this really short magic window of time, right? Um, so I was like really bought into it. I was really um, excited about it. Um, but what I found was by doing that, um, in the period, like the, the, the hour or two after my, after my um, workout, I was just like, bloated like my, my like I was like third trimester level <laughs> pregnancy bloated um I had gas I was just uncomfortable like, like stomach wise I was just uncomfortable all the time um and I, I just it just wasn't a nice feeling you know and I didn't necessarily notice a massive like difference I didn't notice anything measurable different from um the days where I used to really make a massive effort um, to get this anabolic window adhered to it and, and get all my food in that period immediately following the, the training session um, and the times when I, um, you know, I, I, I forgot my protein to the gym or whatever had happened. Um, so I didn't really notice any kind of difference. Positive wise, the only difference I noticed was I was feeling bloated and I was like, things aren't really going well. And I wanted a solution that would kind of, um, maximize my recovery from the workout I'd just done, but at the same time, uh, not ruin my gut health. So I want something that would maximize my recovery uh, and growth, and I want to, to like grow my muscle and build my strength and all the rest of the stuff we want to do. But I didn't want to ruin my gut health. I didn't want my stomach to be like in bits every time I finished a workout, you know? So I was kind of thinking to myself, there must be a better way than this. There must be a better way than this anabolic window stuff that keeps getting pushed down my throat, right? Um, but I didn't know the better way. I just didn't know enough. And maybe you're, you've, you've been in that position before. Maybe you're in that position right now. That's why you're kind of doing your research, watching podcasts like this. Um, or listening to podcasts like this, if you listen. Um, but I just didn't know enough. And regardless of how much research, I just didn't have that level of understanding. So I kept doing what I knew how to do, which was getting that anabolic window, right? And, and nailing the protein shake and ramming the meal in and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and I just kept doing it. Um, until I started learning about this thing called the nervous system two or three years ago, okay? Now, this is taking a turn that you probably weren't expecting when you dialed into a podcast about post-workout, uh, the post-workout window, right? Um, but the nervous system really is the key to a lot of the things we do when we're building muscle and strength. It's a really, really important system in our bodies. Um, so two or three years ago, I started learning about the nervous system, and I kind of knew about it. I kind of knew, like... Um, 
the like the basics of what it did and um you know the names of things but not much more detail than that and I, because i learned about it when i first did my personal training qualification my pt course um which was gosh like eight years ago maybe nine years ago now it was years and years ago um so i kind of got basic education in that but i didn't really know any practical application it was all just like um knowing the names of things so you can write them down to pass a test right um but but two or three years ago, I started like I came across. I can't remember how I I came across it, but I came across something about the nervous system, and it just led me down this rabbit hole. I like got the bit between my teeth. And I was like, oh my god, I can like you know when you can see how something relates to building muscle, and then you want to learn learn more about it. It's not just like this abstract weird thing that you don't care about anymore. So I was like, right, okay, this is the nervous system as a proper application to, to muscle building training, um, and so I, I went down this rabbit hole and I started learning all about the nervous system, and in particular. As a certain branch of the nervous system, I don't, I don't want to get too technical because I, um, I, I want to keep this kind of kind of practical so you can take things away from it and actually learn from it. But I just want to give you like a little bit of an overview of the nervous system. There's one branch of the nervous system, right, called the autonomic nervous system. And all that means it's kind of like automatic, right? So autonomic, automatic, that's the way I remember it. Um, and that just means you don't have any like conscious control over it. It just kind of runs in the background, yeah? But although you don't have any conscious control over it, your actions and your behaviours can influence it, right? So the autonomic or automatic nervous system has another two branches of it called sympathetic and parasympathetic. And all that means is your sympathetic, which you probably know as your fight or flight response or your fight, flight or freeze response. So everybody's or most people have kind of heard of the fight or flight response, right? <clears throat> it's called that the stress response. And the other, the other side of it, the parasympathetic, is the rest and digest response. So these two branches of our autonomic or automatic nervous system determine whether we feel stressed, that our body's ready for, um, you know, evolutionarily speaking, like um, fighting against something or getting away from something. It's ready for movement and action, and um, which is where we want to be in the gym. Um, or our body is in a, um, a state of rest and digest right which means that we are um, traditionally and evolutionarily speaking ready to go to sleep ready to eat some food ready to relax you know and and uh, and take the stress out of our lives they are the two and we could be in a mixture of the two but they are the two um states that we we can be in so this is what I started learning about. Now, um, obviously, as you can imagine, the stress response is where we want to be with training. And the um, uh, uh, when we go when we go into the gym, we do harness this um, stress response deliberately. And um, in a lot of my programs, I teach about in, in this in much more sort of detail how to actually harness the stress response and how to use that evolutionary power to um, skyrocket like sometimes three or four x your um, strength in the gym literally right but the more we utilize that stress response in the gym the more stressed we make ourselves deliberately in the gym which is a good thing in that moment the more uh they've also the further away we move from that rest and digest state okay so you might, you might sort of see where this is going at this point so um the so so the more the more we move away from that rest and digest state the less resources we have available for digestion because not only are we in a different sort of state physiologically speaking but because of the state change what happens in our body then is the blood and the resources and the water and all the things inside of our body that make things happen they move from the internal organs from the stomach and their digestive system and the intestines and the gut and all them areas that help to break down food they move into the muscles they move into the arms and the legs and the chest and the back and all the areas of our body that we're training and especially the areas where we've just been training so if it's just been leg day all of the blood and all of the water and all the plasma and all the different things has in gone into our legs it's not in our digestive system okay so that can present a problem so while i was learning about this stuff i kind of had this epiphany i was kind of thinking to myself well if all of our blood and all of our water and all our resources is in the muscles we've just trained when we're walking out of the gym, that doesn't necessarily leave us in a very good state to break down and digest food, right, straight away. So um, the anabolic window thing, which I've since learned isn't really a thing, um, but the anabolic window thing, even if it is useful, is kind of counterproductive to our nervous system. So we can't really 
process and break down that food because we don't have the resources available, right? Because it's all in our muscles. So I, I, I kind of sat there and thought to myself, what if um, you, instead of being crazy and, and, and adhering to this like strict 45 minute rule and this 45 minute window, what if instead you just allowed yourself maybe an hour or so for your nervous system to calm down and to move back over to the um, rest and digest state, where or the parasympathetic state, where you are in a, a more responsive state to food before you started adding in your shakes and your meals and all the different things that you add in, or that I was adding in as, as quick as possible, right? And I was like, oh, it's a crazy notion. It seems counterintuitive to the anabolic window that I got taught all them years ago. But it actually does make sense because I'm quite interested in like evolution and stuff like that and like what um, our ancestors used to do hundreds of thousands of years ago because that shaped our evolution and to what we are today because our lifestyle today, right, is, is like relatively new. It's pretty new in terms of like we spent hundreds of thousands of years living a certain way and in the blink of an eye in the last couple of hundred years we've been inside. That's it, right? So um, our bodies are designed for the way we used to live a hundred thousand years ago. Um, so it actually makes sense that we would delay um, the time between finishing the workout and adding in our first uh, um, serving of food, right? Because our ancestors were all totally relaxed when they took on food. They were totally chilled out, right? They were basically like, they, they were just... Um, a, a, a smoking a ganja short of being Bob Marley, right? <laughs> when they were, when they were um, having meal times, they always sit around the campfires, all that kind of stuff to have meal times. It's not like they would like hunt a woolly mammoth and then devour it on sight like a like a tiger would, right? They would take the meat back to the tribe or the, or the camp or whatever it was uh, and they would have like a structured like ritual type meal time around the campfire so they would all be in a different state when they were hunting in the stress state to when they were eating in the rest state does that make sense hopefully that makes sense um so yeah the, the, the kind of epiphany i had was like well, we evolved to eat in a relaxed state not a stress state so why am i trying to ram food in in a stress state, it's like the equivalent of hunting a woolly mammoth hundreds of thousand years ago and then trying to rip its flesh off and eat it straight away, right? That's what I was trying to do when I was ch chugging that shake and ramming that meal in as soon as I'd finished my workout. So what I what I decided, I was like, this does this just doesn't make sense to me. Like these two things don't integrate; they don't add to, add up in my head. So what I decided to do is I decided to, to devise like a three step plan to purposely bring my nervous system down because nowadays it's quite difficult for us to purposely bring our physiology back into a rest state because we live in such a stressful society, right? Even just driving back from the gym, you're probably gonna come across loads of things that could stress you out, like people cutting you up in traffic, beeping the horns, things going on, um, the, the weather if it's bad, you know, whatever's going on um, can stress us out. So um, I decided to devise this three-step plan, and this is the uh, three-step plan that really, really helped get rid of the bloating and the gas and all that kind of stuff for me. Uh, I helped me feel a lot better after workouts, and I, I also ended up recovering and, um, and growing a lot more because of this three-step plan. Um, after every single workout, and it's what I do religiously now. So you ready for it? Um, so the first, the first one, it's gonna sound weird, right, guys? But I, I, I want you to just stay with it, and I want you to just remember the purpose you're doing it. You're not doing it for any hippie reason. You're doing it to move your body into a certain state, so the food that you take in will actually get processed, absorbed, digested, and go to muscles rather than causing any issues in the body. Right? So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna meditate. Okay, so I just spend 10 minutes meditating, and meditating might sound a bit weird, right? But um, A, it's really good for your mental health, and B, it's really good for the person who need it right now in relaxing and bringing the body down. So it's just slowing that breath down, watching the breath and just just um um sort of clearing the mind still the mind there's loads of good resources out there stuff like headspace stuff stuff like the waking up app with uh, sam harris um uh there's, there's others i can't remember now as well but there's loads of this free apps that you can get on your um smartphone to get you through like put your headphones in go through guide meditations or you could just take your time for 10 minutes and just watch your breath you just you know um uh, pay attention to your breath um 
and that's one that's really, really good for bringing your nervous system down. The second step is a gentle walk. So it could just be a five minute walk, could be a 10 minute walk, just a really short, gentle walk, um, just to get some movement, just to, again, keep slowing your breathing down and in that through your nose. And then the third thing I do normally on the gentle walk is I will put either put some relaxing, slow tempo music on, um, or, I will listen to something like a, something gentle, like a podcast or an audio book or something like that, um, to sort of switch me out of training mode and back into you know learning mode or relaxation mode or whatever I'm doing. So those, that's the three-step plan that I devised for the post-workout window. Now I know that's nothing, that's not prescriptive in terms of this is what you should eat, right? Um, but it doesn't matter what you choose to eat, um, you aren't going to process it very well unless you have something like that three-step plan that I've devised, um, which brings your nervous system down into that uh, rest state from the stress state. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Does that make sense, guys? Um, so, you know, that there are also supplements that you can take to calm your nervous system down after you, after you work out or if you're in a stress state, which I talk more about in my programs. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm not against protein shakes. I'm not saying don't have a protein shake. I, I have um, whey protein and stuff like that myself. Um, there's different kinds of protein. There's beef protein, different things like that. Um, but I'm not against them. I'm not saying don't have them. I'm not saying do have them. It's up to you. I don't, you know, you just see, see what works for you. But um, after that, the, the only prerequisite I would say is, is make sure you have some kind of ritual. You can use the one I've just give you there or you can devise your own. You can do trial and error and see what works for you. But make sure your nervous system is calmed down before you start trying to throw food at your body or you'll end up with the bloating and the gas and the stomach cramps and the mind fog and the poor recovery and the poor sleep and all oh, this list goes on and on and on. And since I've um, added this ritual in, all of that stuff's gone away. All of it's gone away. My recovery's better. I'm growing more. My strength's better. My mind's clearer. I work better afterwards. My relationships are better. It just permeates everything in life. So um, I know that was maybe a little bit of more of an in-depth technical um, uh, episode, but I hope it made sense. I hope you got something valuable from it, and um, I hope that that will um, make a difference to your training and nutrition and muscle building efforts in the future. Uh, if it did, if you enjoyed that episode, please go ahead and um, drop me a like on the YouTube video, comment on the YouTube video, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're listening on Spotify or iTunes or Google Podcast or whatever platform you're listening on, don't forget to follow this podcast and please leave me a review. It really, really helps um, to let other people know that this information is actually uh, decent. <laughs> it's not absolute rubbish. So um, I hope you enjoyed that guys and I'll see you next time on the Muscle Building Mastery Podcast.